Hey guys, Marika of Milton Public Library here with you in this new year to bring you new books. So the first book that I have for you is Measuring Up and this is by Lily Lamont and Anne Yu. Uh, this book is about Cece and she's just moved to Seattle from um, Taiwan. And although everything is going fairly well for her in adjusting uh, to America from Taiwan, she's made a few friends and most of the stuff has gone okay. There has been um, some like little cultural misunderstandings, like there was a misunderstanding with her pickled cucumbers being mistaken mayhaps for uh, rotten worms. And then there was a um, another mix up with a sleepover, which is not a tradition in Taiwan. Um, and her parents don't quite understand why people would let their children stay at someone else's house. It's just not something that you do. Um, so the real only big issue with Cece is that she's missing her ama and who's back in Taiwan. And her ama is turning 70. It's fixing to be her birthday. And Cece really wants to spend that birthday with her, but she cannot go to Taiwan. So the next best thing is to bring her ama to her. So uh, she just needs the money to do that. Along comes this uh, cooking challenge show and she's an amazing cook. The only problem is, is that um, she only cooks Taiwanese food. So um, she decides to follow in the footsteps and the teachings of Julia Child. So um, yeah, so this is a really fun uh, graphic novel um, that's really colorful and tells a wonderful tale um, about finding your place in a new country. So this is Measuring Up and it is by Lily Lamont and Anne Yu. The next book that I have for you is a nonfiction book and this book is called The History of the World in Comics and it is by Jean-Baptiste Danpanifu. Uh, so this book is pretty amazing because it's also like a graphic novel, obviously, because it's in comics, but it's, um, these two kids and this paleontologist go around and this paleontologist enthusiastically is teaching these children about the history um, of the planet from the beginning, most tiniest little microbes all the way to the early mammals. So um, it's explore our planet with the undying enthusiasm, with maps, diagrams, and a humorous or pretty humorous characters and events that happen in this book. So to me, it's almost like, um, uh, the magic school bus, but about um, our planet and where everything came from and how it all is how it is today. So it's uh, pretty fun. Um, so this is the history of the world in comics, and it is by Jean Baptiste de Penifu. Then we have uh, this book called Root Magic. This book is by Eden Royce. Now, this is a coming of age story, um, but much darker of a coming of age story than we normally are graced with in this middle grade genre. So this book is um, set in 1963 and it's based around a Gula girl named Jezebel. Um, so being a black girl in the South um, in 1963 isn't um, the best thing as it is, but the fact that her family is um, 
is based around root magic. She receives a lot of extra sort of ridicule and whatnot from. So she's having a really, Jezebel, or Jez as she's called, is having a really hard time because she made this decision to jump a grade. So she's now in middle school without her twin brother, Jay. And at the same time, her grandma has passed away. So um, her uncle decides that he's going to teach Jez and Jay um, the root magic, the ancient ways of root magic, um, so that they can help now protect their house because it's just them and their mom. And so Jazz or Jez is a little bit apprehensive to do it because she thinks, one, she doesn't necessarily believe in magic, um, but also she just thinks that it's a bunch of, you know, mumbo jumbo. Uh, so, this is just a really fantastic book about becoming who you were always meant to be uh, and the process of, that it takes to get there. And sometimes it's not, it's not the most pleasant things that help you get there. So this book, again, it's pretty dark, uh, but it has this wonderful telling of African-American folklore and history in Root Magic um, while being engaging and a bit scary. So this book is called Root Magic and it's by Eden Royce. The next book that I have for you is much lighter um, and it is The Smartest Kid in the Universe. And this book is by Chris Gravenstein. Um, and this book is about Jack. Jack's just a regular mediocre student who goes to a regular mediocre middle school. That is until his school has been threatened with a shutdown and Jack and his friends just know that they have to figure out how to save their school. So one day while at his mom's work, where he isn't supposed to be necessarily, he on the desk of the, in the hotel lobby, he sees this jar filled with jelly beans. And so Jack just decides to help him think of, a, or to keep him occupied while he's trying to think of a plan that he's gonna eat this jar of jelly beans. Well, unbeknownst to Jack, in the jar, they are not jelly beans. Rather, they are a new experiment from a scientist um, who just so happened to be attending this conference uh, at the hotel at the time. So what do the beans do to Jake? Well, they make him smart at just about everything, almost everything. So, um, can Jake now use this information and the fact that he now knows everything uh, to help keep his school? Um, could he also maybe use it to do other things? I don't know. So they, he most certainly would never use it uh, to get swept up into trouble, right? No, no one would ever do that. So this is a really fun book, of course. Um, it's got lots of twists and turns, and it's by the guy who also wrote uh, Lemon Cello's Library, so you know that it's just really fun to read. So this is The Smartest Kid in the Universe, and it's by Chris Gravenstein. Next book I have for you is my favorite, Katie the Cat Sitter, um, because look at all of those cats, that's like... My dream is to have that many cats one day and they all look super cool and the cats in this book are just absolutely amazing. Even if you're not a fan of cats, you will be of the cats in this book. So Katie the Cat Sitter is by Colleen A.F. Vandible and Stephanie Yu. So Katie is dreading her summer that's coming up because she knows it is going to be boring. All of her friends are going to camp and Katie, who's raised by her single mom, just knows that they just don't have the money to send her to camp. Um, so she decides if she really wants to go to camp, she's going to raise the money herself. So she starts doing odd jobs for the people in her apartment building that all go just terribly awry 
and it's pretty funny. So then comes in Katie's upstairs neighbor who needs Katie to help watch her cat. Um, but it's not one cat, it's actually 217 cats, which I don't know, seems like that's totally okay number of cats. I mean, right? So when Katie is watching these cats who are all just absolutely amazing, each and every one of them are just like, I mean, cats are awesome, but these cats are like the best kind. So Katie starts to notice that there's this pattern of every time her neighbor needs her to watch her cats, that the um, that the city's super villain attacks. So she starts to wonder if it's, you know, maybe her neighbor is the city super villain. I don't know, maybe, maybe. So, um, but soon Katie and the 217 cats, of course, because, you know, if you have 217 cats, you might as well use 217 cats to your advantage. We'll need to figure out the mystery of who is this um, supervillain and is this supervillain really as villainous as it is thought that they are? So in this time, she also needs to help save her friendship with her friend who has gone to camp because of course she's still just a kid and priorities, right? So this is just a super fun graphic novel um, with some really, really amazing cats. I don't think I can stress that enough. So, I mean, really, as soon as I said cats, everyone should have just been wanting to read this book. So there's tons of adventure. There's really good mystery, um, great picture, fun storyline. So this is Katie the Cat Sitter by Colleen A.F. Um, Vendable and Stephanie Yu. Next book I have is another nonfiction um, with about one of the funniest things to talk about. Who gives a poop, right? Uh, this is by Heather L. Montgomery. So this is a nonfiction book about poop. So poop isn't just a funny thing that we like to talk and joke about. Who knew? Um, it's also a really, really powerful tool in science. Poop can lead to so many different things. So this book will really educate you on all of the wonderful, stinky, and amazing facts about poop. So including all of the really fun terms that people use for the word poop. Um, this book also includes a really fun um, experiment at the end to do at home. So finally, a time has come when you can enjoy poop jokes, but also learn valuable information. So this is Who Gives a Poop? And it is by Heather L. Montgomery. The last book that I have for you today is uh, very fitting for this time of year. Um, this is called The Sea in Winter and it is by Christine Day. So Maisie Cannon is recovering from an injury she has to um, her ACL. And this injury has been sidelining her from her um, passion, which is ballet and she dreams that one day she's going to be a ballet dancer and while she's trying to recover from this injury um there are auditions and all of these things going on that she feels is absolutely essential for her to live her dream and she's having to sit out even though everything with her injury is seems to be healing on time it's not quick enough for her um so this is causing a lot of heartache and really sort of negative emotions in Maisie and she's taking it, the heartache and the frustration out on her family. So while they're on a family hike, 
all of this stuff really seems to come to a boil. Uh, this is just a really amazing story that um, is set in the backdrop of this general area. Um, and it's an amazing story dealing with with pain and the potential loss of a dream at such a young age. And it's interwoven with the wonderful history um, of the Native American story. There are three different tribes represented in this book and talking about just their different histories of them and in the area that they're in is just absolutely just gorgeous. It's just hands down a wonderful book. So this is The Sea in Winter and it is by Christine Day. So there we have it, the first set of books for the new year. I hope that you enjoyed that and I also hope that you want to check out some of our books and I'll see you next time. Bye!